Well, welcome to our next unit, my lovely students. What we have is uh, we've, we've gone through the uh, Enlightenment period, and we've done some comparative governments, and now it's time to talk about the Industrial Revolution. Hallelujah. So this is just a brief introductory lecture in the Industrial Revolution, take some Cornell notes on it, and we'll be ready to roll. But the very first thing we have to do is we have to do s some essential questions. Uh, the first essential question is, what impact did the Industrial Revolution have on people? And we're not talking about just from a positive standpoint. There's lots of negative impacts as well. We're also going to talk about where and when did the Industrial Revolution begin. And I'm going to give you a clue. It, it isn't here in the United States. When the Industrial Revolution began, the United States was not a country yet. I mean, there weren't many people living here. And also, uh, what preconditions uh, were present which allowed the Industrial Revolution to explode, take place, uh, commence? Now, this is interesting. Uh, this is a great word. The word is artisan. And if you're not sure what the word artisan means, it means a skilled craftsman. That's what an artisan is. Now, this is a picture right here of a dude that's called a cobbler. And in case you're wondering what a cobbler is, a cobbler is a shoemaker. And this is a modern cobbler in a place called Pakistan. Now, there's some things about uh, artisans that are very significant. This is the way things were made prior to the Industrial Revolution. This individual, this cobbler right here, uh, is a respected member of the community. Uh, it, a skilled craftsman is somebody that has standing. If you walked up to somebody and said, what are you? Well, I'm a cobbler. I mean, I'm somebody that, that has a skill that not many people can do. Uh, what's more, if you make something by hand, uh, it's generally pretty darned expensive. Uh, so this person made a good salary. So if this person was well respected because they had the skill. This person uh, made an expensive product so they had a good lifestyle. And what's more, this person worked at their own pace. They're their own boss. Uh, this was a pretty good lifestyle for most people. They had respect. That's the, that's the bottom line. These people were respected in the community. Now, we're going to go from this uh, person working probably in their home on creating this, this unique art uh, work, this artifact, this shoe, this, this uh, I don't know, this, this uh, piece of jewelry, this, uh, this piece of clothing, this article of clothing. We're going to go from that to these massive rooms filled with tons of people working on assembly lines that produce things in large quantities. Now, these people are unskilled labor, the people that work on these assembly lines. Now, you've got to think about that word, unskilled labor. That's certainly not as glamorous as being an artisan. So what happens is um, people just had to specialize in what they do best. Now, you're seeing uh, agricultural uh, skilled, uh, unskilled labor here. But you go back to here, this person working on an assembly line, these people didn't have specific skills. I mean, they just did work that, that anyone could do. Now, they're no longer going to get paid by the uh, job. They're going to go to getting paid by the hour. They're going to get paid at a much lower rate. The working conditions are going to be much poorer. They're not going to be respected like artisans were. So uh, the Industrial Revolution had pros and cons for people, but as far as working people go, uh, it was generally a negative thing. Now, the, time, the question is, where and when did this revolution take place? Let's look at this country right here. This is the country of England. Now, England is a portion of a larger nation called the United Kingdom. If you were to look over here, this would be Wales up here. This would be Scotland over here. Northern Ireland is over here. And then here's the big uh, province of England, and right down here in southern England is the city of London. So uh, when we think of England, it's just a state inside the United Kingdom. But in the mid-1700s, this place, England, was absolutely ripe for this industrial revolution. Now when we think of the United Kingdom or England today, we think of a country that's kind of small and doesn't have nearly as much power. 
But boy, back in the mid-1700s, it was the dominant superpower in the world, much stronger than the United States that wasn't even a country yet. We were a colony of England, and uh, stronger than any European country. So you might ask the question, you know, what was it about England that made it so ripe for the Industrial Revolution in the mid-1700s? Now, the first thing that happened is there was an agricultural revolution before there was an industrial revolution. Now, think about uh, last unit when we talked about feudalism and how, like, you know, you had a, a, a lord of a manor and all the serfs or peasants worked for that person. What happened around the mid-1700s in England is uh, wealthy people acquired more and more and more land and what they did is they fenced that land off and didn't allow peasants to just come and farm like in common ground. This was called the enclosure movement and it literally meant the fencing off of farming fields. Now when you had that all of a sudden farms became a heck of a lot more productive which is interesting. Now when you have more food and, uh, and you know, when you have an increase in productivity, you have more supply at cheaper prices. When you have more food, you have more population. You see it in the animal kingdom all the time. Like for instance, how many deer are there in the state of Ohio right now? Lots. And that's because they have a stable food supply. And the only predators they have are you know, people shooting them during deer season. Well, in England, as a result of this agricultural revolution, you have this massive population uh, movement. And this greater, this larger population is going to be crucial to the uh, Industrial Revolution. So you have all these people, all these people that are living on the countryside, but you know, the opportunities just aren't there anymore. So the next thing you're going to see is this mass migration. I love this picture of these birds migrating this mass migration of people in England from the rural countryside to the urban cities. And what that's going to do is it's going to create this huge labor force for uh, small companies that are about ready to expand with the Industrial Revolution. Plus, there's going to be a lot of customers to buy up all these excess products that are going to be made. One thing that also makes England also just perfect for this Industrial Revolution is even though it's a small island, it does have some extremely valuable natural resources. And here's a lump of coal. Coal was one of the things that England had in abundance. And there's another mineral called iron ore. When you mix those two together, you're going to get steel. But coal can obviously be burned for, for energy purposes, which it was. So. Uh, this is very significant. And then the other thing, the last thing, is you have this extremely stable government. It's kind of interesting. Uh, people think about the United States and our stable government, but uh, the United Kingdom became a constitutional monarchy way back in the year 1215 when King John was forced to sign something called the Magna Carta, which talked about limited monarchy. Uh, this picture right here is a picture of the Houses of Parliament, which had been in session for, you know, well over a thousand years. Now, this government stability is incredibly important. Do you realize that England is so stable, there is no written constitution? They just follow this thing called common law, which means that people do what they've basically always done. And they follow these rules even though these rules aren't even written down. It's probably the most stable government in the world. Now why a stable government is important is it gives people who are willing to invest money confidence that their investment will be safe. And a big part of the Industrial Revolution is going to be massive investment by wealthy individuals. So those are the preconditions for the Industrial revolution. Thank you, my friends.